An important notion in the philosophy of language is the compositionality of meaning. Compositional semantics is interested in the way meaning of smaller expressions like words or phrases contribute to the meaning of complex expressions like sentences. With a given finite set of word meanings or phrase meanings, a semantic system is expected to understand, generate any given sentence, meaning of any given sentence. Suppose we have a finite set of meanings, meanings of these items, words and phrases, and then we are expected to understand this sentence, Fido Barks, without memorizing its meaning. Because we have the meaning of Fido here and meaning of Barks. So compositional semantics, or in general, Axiomatized theory of meaning is interested in the mechanism behind this production, productive capacity. In this general framework, word meanings are the axioms, or meaning of smaller expressions are the axioms of the system, and sentence meanings are the theorems. Let me give you one example. Let's say our first axiom is the word Fido means a particular dog, namely Fido. And the second axiom is that the word barks means the activity of barking. Then the theorem is the sentence Fido barks means that the particular dog Fido engages in the activity of barking. So we do not need to write down the meaning of Fido barks as an axiom. Instead, we can derive this theorem from these two axioms. But can we derive this theorem from these two axioms by using logical laws alone? As you know from your logic courses, there is no rule to derive, there is no logical rule to derive this axiom. So then we need to add further axioms, the compositionality axiom. It says if the word Fido means a particular dog, namely Fido, the first axiom here, and the word barks means the activity of barking, the second axiom, then, so first axiom, second axiom implies the sentence Fido barks means that the particular dog engages in the activity of barking. So once we have these two axioms, then we have the theorem, right? The sentence Fido barks means that the particular dog Fido engages in the activity of barking. But the problem with this axiom is that it is too specific. It is not a general one. We cannot derive a theorem about the meaning of Aristotle is sitting or Fido is a philosopher with using this compositionality axiom. So then we need a general one. The general compositionality axiom is this one. If a subject term M means something say X and a predicate term N means something say Y, then the sentence made up of M followed by N like M N means that X engages in or exemplifies Y. So M means X, N means Y, then M N means that X engages in the in or exemplifies y. If we have Fido here, Fido means Fido, and we have barks here, barks means barking, activity of barking, then m followed by n, Fido barks means that Fido engages in the activity of barking. So that then we have the theorem. By adding further axioms, like an axiom about the word Aristotle, proper name Aristotle, and another axiom, uh, the word is a philosopher means that the property of being a philosopher, we can derive a theorem about the theorem about the sentence Aristotle is a philosopher, or Fido is a philosopher. For sentences in this form, the sentence Aristotle is a philosopher and Fido barks, 
right? We have a sentence, sentential connective, and another sentence. The sentence Aristotle is a philosopher and Fido Bugs means that the particular person Aristotle exemplifies the property of being a philosopher. And the particular dog, Fido, engages in the activity of barking. In order to derive such a theorem, we need a further axiom, the axiom of sentential axiom about a sentential connective conjunction. Here we have that axiom. If a sentence is any sentence, this is a general axiom, universally quantified one. If a sentence S means a proposition, say P, so S means P, and a sentence R means a proposition, say Q. R means Q, then the expression S and R, as you may realize, there is quasi quotations or quine quotations here, the corners. The reason is that in this formula, we have expressions from meta language and object language. So S is from meta language and is from object language. S is a variable from our meta language. Aristotle is a philosopher, is an expression from object language, and is an expression from object language. Fidobox is an expression from object language, but here S is a variable from meta language, not from object language. That's why we use quasi quotations or quine quotations here, quine quotes here. So S and R means that P and Q. S means P, R means Q. Then the expression S and R means that P and Q. In order to derive a theorem about negation, like the sentence, it is not the case that negation, Aristotle is a philosopher, means that negation, the particular person, Aristotle exemplifies the property of being a philosopher, or instead you may say this sentence means that Aristotle does not exemplify the property of being a philosopher. In order to derive this theorem, we need a further axiom, the axiom of negation. An axiom, again, about a sentential connective. Here we have the axiom of negation. If a sentence S means a proposition, say P, then the expression, it is not the case that S, again we have expression, in the same formula we have an, part of the formula is from object language and another part, this variable, is from meta language. That's why we have uh, coin codes here. It is not the case that S, whatever that S is, means that not P. With using this negation axiom with these axioms we can derive the theorem 5. So as natural language users it is not difficult for us to understand meaning of any of these sentences. We do not read or we do not need to write down all these axioms in order to understand these sentences. But what we are trying to do here is to understand the mechanism behind how we understand meaning of any given sentence once we know the meaning of its constituents. So, thanks for listening.